In this episode of Be Hooked Crochet, we're going to make the Bernat Mix Home Crochet Pillows. For the supplies list and pattern, click on the little icon in the top right corner of your screen, or you can find the link in the description below. My name is Brittany, and I'm so excited to be working with my friends over at Michael's Craft Store for this project. Now let's dive into the tutorial. We're going to begin this little set with the smaller of the two pillows. We're going to grab color A, which is gold mine that I'm working with, but I wanna give you a couple tips before we dive into the slip knot. Bernat Mix Home has four different unique textures. It's basically like we're taking four different types of yarn and putting them together into one skein. And you can see each one of those textures here, and you've probably guessed this really bumpy texture that we see over on the side of our screen, that's gonna be the most challenging section to work with, but it gives us one of the most rewarding results at the end. So my first tip for you is to open up your skein of yarn and figure out where you are within these four sections of textures. Now the one thing you're gonna to need to do is completely avoid that really bumpy texture piece of yarn because that is going to give us no stitch definition. It's gonna be really hard to start our project when we're working with a yarn where we can't count our stitches. And we need to sort of learn this stitch and this technique and work our way up to something a little more challenging like that. So my personal recommendation is to find that bumpy section of yarn and work that all the way to the end and cut your yarn at the texture of yarn that's immediately following. Now you may not like to do this. Nobody likes to waste yarn. I completely get that. So you don't have to do this. But what I do recommend is that you choose one of the three other textures of yarn to start this project when you're creating your slip knot. It's gonna make your life a whole lot easier in the long run. So this light and fuzzy texture is what immediately follows that really bumpy section of yarn when we have no stitch definition. That's where I'm starting my pillow. And I'm gonna make sure that I start this on both sections so that my stripes will match up from front to back. So that's just a little tip. If you want it to match, you'll make sure that you start in the same place of the skein for the front section and the back section. Okay, so to start off our project, we're going to create a slip knot and place that loop on your hook. And then we need to make a foundation chain of 49. So I'm counting each one of these chains. We'll have a total of 49. Now we are making a pillow that measures 16 inches long. And once you work through this chain, you're gonna find that it's going to measure much longer than the 16 inches we need. It's actually gonna measure about 20 inches and you can do a little check to make sure you're on the right track. If you need to change your hook size in any way, you can definitely do that to obtain the gauge. But we want it to measure about 20 inches and that's because the stitch pattern that we're using shrinks up quite a bit. Anytime you, you do a slip stitch crochet technique, you can expect that it's gonna shrink up a little bit. So I'm gonna find the second chain for my hook by looking at it at the front with the braided section. So I have one and two, that's the second chain. And then I'll flip it over so I can see the back bump. And that's where I'll work my hook. And now we're gonna make a slip stitch. So we're just going to yarn over and pull up a loop and then pull that same loop through the loop on your hook. And that's our repeat. This is a really simple stitch pattern. The yarn does all of the work for us. We're gonna slip stitch into the next chain and in the next and all the way to the end of our foundation chain. We'll have a total of 48 slip stitches in our first row and for every row because this is going to be the repeat. And it's good to count as you go along and what we're left with is a really short stitch that we're gonna expose one of these edges and it's gonna give it sort of a knitted appearance to it. Now slip stitches are one of those stitches that are challenging in terms of your tension. You can see that as I'm working these, 
I am I'm going nice and slow, which I feel like is a great approach. And I'm pulling up the loop and you'll see me push the yarn back onto the hook. And that's because the area that's right up next to the hook is considerably smaller than this part right here. I wanna make sure this loop has a chance to reach the same size as the loop on my hook before I pull it through. And I'm doing that because it's going to make sure my stitches are even, first of all, but it's also going to make sure that my stitches are relatively loose. Now everybody can get a first row of slip stitches, but where it really trips people up is when they go to work the second row and their loops are so tight they can't get their hook in them. So this is one way to avoid that. Just make sure you're working your stitches a little more loose than you normally would. Take a little bit of time and work one slip stitch into every chain until you get to the end of the row. Once you've made it to the end of your row, it's a good idea to go ahead and do a quick measurement and make sure that your piece measures about 16 inches. We want it to stretch a little bit, but we don't want it to be too big either. So if you're measuring 17 inches or larger, you'll want to go ahead and change your hook size. You'll actually drop down a hook size if your piece is measuring longer. That's gonna adjust your gauge. So that way our pillow cover is a little bit snug so it doesn't have a lot of looseness to it. We don't want it to sort of fall away from the pillow form. We want it to stretch around the pillow form. To move on to row number two, we're going to chain one and turn our work. And that chain one is not counting as a stitch. It's just getting us set up for the next row. And we're gonna find the back loop of the stitch. So looking at it from this direction, I can see my chain right here. I'm ignoring that. Well, my first stitch is right here. And when you're looking at it this way, this is considered the front loop because it's right in front of me. And this is considered the back loop because it's towards the back. Now I'm going to insert my hook in the back loop only and make a slip stitch. And I'm going to slip stitch in the back loop only of every single stitch until you get to the end of the row. Now, once again, you'll have a total of 48 stitches. You can count as you go along. And you'll also be mindful of your tension. See how easy it is for me to get my hook into that loop? Well, that's because I'm purposefully making these stitches a little bit more loose than I normally would crochet because I know t that slip stitches have a tendency of being a lot tighter than some of the other stitches. And what I would like for you to do at this point is repeat this row until your work measures 12 inches from our starting edge. So our starting edge being right here, we want it to measure 12 inches to fit our pillow form. And we're just repeating this row number two. We start the row with a chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And we just make a slip stitch into every single back loop. Now you will want to make slight adjustments as your yarn transitions from one texture to the next. This one has a really silky feel to it. So it's really easy to work the stitches. It's super easy for me to get my hook into the loops, but it's going to not be quite as easy when you get to some of the other textures. When you get to that t-shirt material section, so this part right here, that you have to put a little bit more work behind it in order to work your stitches. So it just doesn't glide quite as easily as this really fuzzy soft piece does. And so you really want to be mindful of your tension when you're going through that section of the yarn. And of course, when we get to that bumpy section, well, that's a beast all on its own. I wanna take some time to give you some tips on how to work with that really challenging but beautiful section of the yarn. So let's have a look at that next. I know you're probably wondering what on earth am I supposed to do with this section of yarn where it's got all these little bumps and all this wonderful texture. Well, this is both a great thing 
and a not so great thing. When we're working with really bumpy yarn like this, we have no stitch definition whatsoever. So stitch definition is the ability to be able to see your stitches. So if we look back at some of our previous rows, we can see the slip stitches. They sort of look like a knit stitch. But when we look here, and, and here where I've got the same section worked, I'm using the same exact stitch, but it looks totally different. Well, this makes for a really interesting design, but it also makes for somewhat of a nightmare to crochet. So I'm gonna give you some tips to working with this type of yarn. My first tip is to always look for your stitches at the top. Depending on the colorway you're working with, you do have a strand of yarn. So just identify what that color is. So for me, I have a black color here, and that's what I'm looking for. If I look really closely, the line that's going through, or that black line for me, is going to form a V, or a, a relatively distorted V. It's not gonna be perfect because we have all of this texture that's worked into it, but it does give us a starting point. The other tip I would give you is to count your stitches as you go. We know how many stitches we need to have for our project, and we just want to count when we're working with this section here. So anytime you're working with this really fuzzy part of the yarn, go ahead and count your stitches. You can see as I'm going along, I'm really looking for the back loop on the top. So I can see that there is a strand right here because I've got that I've got that black piece that's really visible, and then I can see another piece right here. So that's what I'm targeting when I'm trying to find the back loop. And am I 100% certain that I'm catching the back loop? No, not at all. I really have no idea. Just like you, this is all a matter of guesswork and counting and just trying to do the best you can. When you're working with a yarn that has zero stitch definition, that's all you can do. You can just do your best, but know that any mistakes you make are going to be completely hidden with the yarn. So the, the low stitch definition is not so great to actually work with, but it helps you in the sense that it hides your mistakes. So I could be crocheting in the back loop of the previous row or the back loop or the, the front loop rather. I could be, honestly, I have no idea. I'm just taking an educated guess to where I think the back loop would be and working through the row that way and always making sure you're counting your stitches as you go. That's gonna give you a good idea of where you need to be, where you need to start and end. And it's gonna make sure that your project as it progresses is going to have straight edges. So when you're working with this section of the yarn, just do the best you can, take these little tips and just power through it because let me tell you, it is so worth it at the end to see how cool this pillow works up with all of this texture. Once you finish crocheting the front part of your pillow, we can go ahead and fasten off. So right now it measures about 12 inches from the starting edge to where I'm at now and you can leave yourself a tail that's just long enough to weave in. We're gonna use a separate piece of yarn to sew everything together. And then you'll just take that tail and pull it through the loop on your hook. Now, of course, we need a front and a back to our pillow, so go ahead and repeat the steps we've just covered to make your back piece for the pillow. And when we return, I'll show you how to sew everything together. Once you have both sides crocheted, we're ready to seam the two sides together. And the first thing you'll need to do is choose which side you want to be the right side. 
Now the stitch pattern is reversible, so it looks the same from one side to the next, but you will see subtle differences in the way it looks from the transitions from where we went from one texture to the next. So pick the, the, the side that you like the best and put that in the middle. So I have one piece down here on the bottom and I'm choosing this to be the right side, so it's facing up. Same thing with this. This is going to be my right side and it's facing inward. Now the next thing you'll need to do is thread a piece of yarn on your darning needle and I recommend that you stay away from this yarn here. You want to use any of the more solid looking yarns to sew this together and we're just going to start down at one corner and just insert your needle from one side to the next in the point. So I started down at one of the bottom corners. I'm gonna work up the side, we're gonna go across the top, down the other side, and then we're going to insert our pillow form before we sew up that last side. What you'll need to do is work one stitch for every single row. You wanna make sure your stitches are close enough together that we don't have any loops or holes or anything like that. So I'm going to work a whip stitch. So that's where I'm always going in from the same direction and placing them as often as I can. The other thing I recommend for you to do is be mindful of your needle placement when you're making your stitches. You want to make sure that the stitches are even and that way they match so you have a nice clean seam when we turn this on the right side. As I mentioned before, you'll want to go ahead and seam up this side just like I'm demonstrating here. And then we're going to seam along the top edge. Now when we get here, it's going to be a lot easier because we have stitches to work into. So you're just going to work your needle into one loop on one side and one loop on the other side and work that across. So go ahead and finish sewing up these three sides. So what I have done here off camera is I have finished sewing all three sides of my pillow. And you know what? We don't even have to weave in our ends because we've sewn this on the wrong side. So we're just going to flip it inside out. So go ahead and do that now. So I now have it so that the right side is facing out. I have left my yarn attached because we're going to need to sew up this bottom edge and it actually worked out pretty well for me. So I am using the same of the texture yarn to sew it together that I had here on my finishing edge and I may have planned that out ahead of time. So you want to do that if you can. If you've already started sewing it together on one of the other textures, you can just go ahead and fasten off and then start seaming with the same texture yarn if you have them both on the same side. If not, I would recommend trying to match whatever is on the front because you will see this seam as we're going to be seaming on the right side of the pillow now. Then once you have your pillow form in place and we have our scrap piece of yarn here that we're using to sew it together, I'm gonna use the same technique that I did on the other side. I'm gonna go into the front loop from the bottom edge and the back loop from the top edge and I'm just going to work a whip stitch all the way across and just make one stitch into each stitch that you have. So into each sl slip stitch you'll make a whip stitch. The thing you want to be mindful of during this process is making sure that you're matching your stitches up from one side to the other. That way it's going to work out evenly.
Once you have your seam all finished, then you can go ahead and just weave in this one tail. And I like to weave it in just right along the seam. Now this yarn is really easy to hide because it's sort of fuzzy and you can't see it. And I'm just sort of working this through some stitches. I'm not really going in any particular loop. Actually works out a little bit better if you're kind of sloppy with it. When you split the fibers of the yarn, it has a tendency to want to stay in better. So that way your end doesn't work its way out in the future. All right, so that finishes up our first pillow. Let's get started now on pillow number two. Now we're gonna go ahead and start on the second pillow now. You'll need to grab color B and your same hook that you used for the previous pillow. We're going to start with the slip knot. And again, if your skein starts with that really bumpy texture, just try to avoid that. Maybe pull from the center or the outside, see if you can get a different texture, or if you absolutely have to, go ahead and trim that section of yarn off. You should be okay as far as yarn requirements go. You really just don't wanna work with that really textured yarn for the foundation chain because it makes it difficult to count your stitches. Okay, so this time we're gonna start with 54 chains. Once you have your 54 chains, we're gonna locate the third chain from the hook. So we'll count one, two, and three. Again, I like to work in that back bump, so I'll flip it over. And this pattern is gonna require us to use half double crochet stitches. So we'll wrap that yarn once, insert the hook into the chain, and pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. And we're gonna make one half double crochet into every chain until we get to the end of this row. When you make it to the end of your row, you're going to chain two and turn your work. And the pattern repeat for this one is really simple too. We're just going to make one half double crochet into every stitch. Now we're not counting this chain two as a stitch, so we're gonna go ahead and work our first half double crochet in that very first stitch. And then we're just gonna keep moving on like that. We're gonna make one half double crochet into every stitch until we get to the end of the row. Now this time around, we'll have a total of 51 stitches in each of our rows. And it's always a good idea just to count every so often and definitely when you get to that textured part of the yarn, go ahead and count those stitches for every row. For the remainder of this pillow, what we're going to do is make one large square. So we want this to measure 20 inches from this bottom edge all the way up. We want that to measure 20 inches. That's the size of our pillow form. For this one, we don't need to work a front and a back section because we're gonna get a little creative with how we piece this thing together. So go ahead and finish crocheting your entire square for your pillow form. You want it to measure 20 inches from the bottom edge all the way up. Once you have an even square, so your length measures the same as your width, we're gonna transition from rows to rounds. We're gonna do this to add a little bit more size to our overall square. And the transition from working in this direction to going around is really gonna create some visual interest for our pillows when we piece them together. To start this next transition, I have completed this row here, and I'm gonna go right into the corner and start working down the side. So you probably have one stitch in your last stitch of this final row that you worked. Well, we're gonna go ahead and make two more half double crochets in the same stitch. Now, since I'm working with this really fuzzy yarn, what I'm gonna do is place a stitch marker in that middle stitch because every time we work one of the corners we're going to make three half double crochet stitches in the same stitch and that middle one is always going to be our increase point. 
And since I'm working with this really fuzzy yarn, it's gonna be difficult for me to see that stitch and I might end up with a crooked corner. So I'm just placing that stitch marker on that stitch and then make one more half double crochet and that's gonna complete the corner. Now what we need to do is make sure our square stays square. So we need to have the same number of stitches along the side edge that we have on the top and the bottom because the top and the bottom we have stitches to work into and that's great, but on the sides we don't have that luxury. So we have to make our stitches around the post of each row. So I have counted my rows, I have 37 rows, and I know I need to spread 51 stitches somewhat evenly over that amount of rows. So what I'm going to do is work one half double crochet in the side stitch of the next row down. And then I'll work two in the next. So I'm just working around the post. And you wanna keep count as you go, especially right now when if you're working on the fuzzy part of the yarn like I am, you wanna make sure you have that correct number. We need to have 51 stitches on the side, same as we have on the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna locate the next row and work a half double crochet there. And then two in the next. And your numbers may turn out a little bit differently. Obviously I'm not gonna be able to do one and two every row because I will end up with too much, but you can do a little bit of math behind it. You'll just take the total number of stitches that you know you need, which was 51 in our case, and subtract the number of rows that we have, so 37. And that leaves us with 14 stitches. So we need to place two half double crochets in 14 of these rows. So now I've completed all of my half double crochets down the side and I'm now at the bottom edge. So this is our foundation chain where we worked into and I'm just going to find the first stitch or that first chain that we made and I'm gonna make three half double crochets in that space. Now I don't have to mark this middle one because I'm using a yarn now that I can easily see and count those stitches but you can add it to, to your middle stitch there if you want to because we're always going to make three half double crochets in that middle stitch. Now what we want to do from here is just make one half double crochet into every single stitch. When you've made it to the end of your row, you're going to find your last stitch, which should be your chain. We're gonna work three half double crochets there. And now what we need to do is just repeat that. So we're gonna shift our work over and start working our half double crochets in the side. And then we're going to add three half double crochets to the very end. So we have our corner and then we're gonna work one half double crochet into every stitch along the top side of the pillow before we join to complete the round. So go ahead and finish up the last two sides. We'll talk about that join and how to continue working our pillows. Once you've finished your round, you're going to find your first stitch, which I have that middle stitch marked, so I know my first stitch is right next to that. I'm gonna join with the slip stitch there to finish off the round. Now we're going to repeat this last round until our pillow measures about a 28 inch square. We're gonna begin each round with a chain two, and this is going to count as our first half double crochet. So we're gonna join with the slip stitch to this chain right here when we get to the end of the round. And then we're going to make three half double crochets in every corner stitch. So every middle stitch
and then you'll just make one half double crochet into every stitch all the way around. Do that and repeat this round until your work measures about 28 inches. And once you get to that point, we'll talk about the assembly. Once your pillow form measures about 28 inches on each side, you want it to be a 28 inch square. Then we can go ahead and fasten off. and then pull that tail through the loop on your hook. So the next thing we're going to do is crochet this onto our pillow form. Now what I've done here is I have placed my pillow form. I'm just laying it out on the table here with the wrong side facing upward. And then I just folded each of the four corners in. Now in order for me to make this a little bit easier for you to see, I'm going to demonstrate how to start crocheting the the ends together without the pillow form in there but you can go ahead and place it in there or you can start like this if you find that it's a little bit easier you're going to pick one of the corners to start on and you'll grab your new yarn and fasten on so we're going to grab our new yarn and create a slip knot and then you'll insert your hook into the back loop, so the loop that's further away from you, on the side that's closest to you. And then you'll go across to the next stitch on the other side. We're going to catch the front loop of that one. That's going to leave the outer loop on each side exposed and that's going to contribute to the pattern. So you'll pull that loop through the stitch and chain one. Now from here, we're going to make a slip stitch in the next stitch. So I'm going to catch the back loop of one side and the front loop of the other side. Pull that through and through. And we're going to complete this for every stitch. We want to make sure that everything is working out as evenly as possible, so you want to just check your work as you go, stitch a few and make sure that it's going to end up at about the same place on the other side. And you're going to work this for every stitch as we go down this row. When you get to the corner, we're going to basically just jump from this side to this side. Now if you have some of the fuzzy yarn you will have to just do the best you can and guesstimating where those stitches are. But you're going to work it all the way to the point here and then you're just going to continue with this side here. Just make your next stitch from here to here and that's going to join that together. So I'm going to go ahead and put my pillow form inside here and finish seaming it up. And the last thing we'll demonstrate is how to add the fringe to these stitches. So let's have a look at how to do that next. After you've crocheted your pillow together, your form is in place, then the last thing that we need to do is add the fringe. And you can see I've already done that a little bit here. I recommend that you start at the middle point of your pillow and work out from there. So you can take a couple different approaches to this. You can use all of the same texture of yarn for all of your pieces of fringe, or you could mix it up. You could sort of make a, a more organized approach to it. So you could have all of the same texture from here and then have another texture immediately following that, or you could totally mix it up as you go. No matter which way you go with the fringe, the technique is going to be the same no matter what. So you're going to make cuts of yarn that are 8 inches long, and then you're going to find your slip stitch row. This is the row where we slip stitch the, for the cover onto the form. Well, you're going to locate one of those outer loops, and you want to go for the ones on the bottom. And that's so the fringe will hang a little bit better. Then you'll take your cut of yarn and fold it in half so that it's even on the bottom edge. And then place that on your hook and pull it through the loop. Then just take your fingers and grab the two ends and pull it through the loop. 
and pull it tight. Now you're going to place one fringe for every stitch that you have. 